We are Facebook Live. Hello, everybody, and thank you so much for being again at K Space Miami. Uh, we are with us in New Jersey, uh, the mayor, the mayor of what's the name of your city? Uh, mayor? Englewood, New Jersey, sir. Englewood, New Englewood, Jersey. That's right. Yes, he's also a very famous uh, immigration uh, lawyer, um, Michael Vildes. We want to thank you so so much for giving us the opportunity of uh, sharing a few words of Torah, a little bit of yourself. I'm going to ask you a few questions now. Uh, we are in the uh, almost at the last part of the matching campaign. We reach almost the goal of 200,000, and we have a bonus extra now of uh, 15,000 more, which is 30,000 more, um, thanks to uh, some donors who are helping us. So, Michael, can you introduce yourself? Thank you, Rabbi. You're very kind. Um, ladies and gentlemen, it's my privilege uh, to speak here today. Uh, the good rabbi has become a dear friend very quickly, um, not just um, endearing himself uh, to my wife, Amy, and I, uh, but to so many of our colleagues and friends uh, in the diaspora. Um, I'm uh, 55 years young. I'm married, uh, thank God, once. I have four beautiful children. Um, I'm the mayor of a small city in Inglewood, New Jersey. It's my third term. I took a break of 10 years uh, in between my second and my third term. Uh, to run a law practice. As the rabbi indicated, I'm a managing partner of an immigration law practice called the uh, Wilds and Weinberg PC. We're in New York City, in Englewood, New Jersey, in Miami, in Aventura, and also in Los Angeles by appointment only. Right now, rabbi, we're all at home. And Chazdei uh, Hashem, we're lucky to still have a practice. And there are a lot of people, not just Jews, but the world over, that are being displaced because of COVID. We have a very robust uh, president who's going aggressively against immigration, canceling the H visas for the rest of the year, the L visas, the J visas. Um, and it's a, it's a real task in our hand. We have the schut, the privilege of actually representing uh, the president's wife, Mrs. Trump. Melania is a client, her parents, her sister. Um, I had the privilege of working with the president on his immigration matters for many years. My father before me, and thank God to Badr Lachayim, He's still practicing over 60 years. He's 87 years old. He was actually John Lennon's immigration lawyer in a celebrated case when he took on the Nixon administration. We're both law professors and I continue into the 10th year. Two of my four children have um, already been barred as lawyers. Um, my son is working in immigration courts in Miami. Um, I became a grandpa three weeks ago Another, I got a new son and a wedding for my third child two weeks ago, and I'm expecting another a grandchild in another two weeks. So it's been the best uh, pandemic that a, uh, a, a, that a father and a grandfather could imagine under these trying circumstances. Amazing, amazing. Mazel tov, mazel tov. Thank you, Rabbi. Um, so do you have any inspirational story you, you, would you like to share, a personal story? Um, you know that uh, today for us is a special day because it's a day of uh, giving um, is a matching campaign that some people are matching donations from people and most of the donors are young people. So um, uh, you also are a donor. I know you support a lot of communities and a lot of institutions. So do you have any story you'd like to share that, that maybe touch your heart? You know, Ish Kamat Nat Yado, it talks about the notion of giving according to what your needs are. You know, I grew up and I, I am to this day a tremendous Elvis Presley, the king, the Melech uh, fan. And my brother and I studied a lot of his um, travels. And I was shocked to learn that he was a big Baltstaka. He was a person who gave willingly and beautifully. I learned when I was young years back that there was a young Mexican girl who had never walked, who was in the same hospital ward that Elvis Presley was visiting once and undergoing a, an operation to straighten her spine and legs. And Elvis actually sent her gifts. He brought her family from Mexico. He paid for the hotel accommodations and paid for the child's hospital bills. He set up oh. another Jewish doctor in a medical practice. The whole notion, he gave tickets to Disney World for a small girl uh, dying of leukemia and did the same for an 87 year old man whose lifelong wish was to go to Disneyland. This king, was imbued with, I think, with the Torah notion of tzedaka, of giving. In one of the parshas in, in Bechul Chausai, it says, uh, it talks about tzedaka. 
you know, the uh, Chazal or sages ask, why didn't they just say you should give charity? What does it mean that you shall contribute or you shall strengthen him? The Chizaktabo. Rashi, a, say, a, a commentary, says that it's as if it were a donkey and you begin to see the donkey carrying so much weight. With one person's guidance, the donkey can go forward. But if you don't help the donkey along, under the sheer weight, it'll take five people to then lift the donkey. The notion in our own society, and we can see when the chips are down and we're going through a pandemic, that we require to help people according to what we can do to help them at that time, that it's less lifting, it's less of a physical lift for us if we are to help somebody. The chizaktabo is the notion that you are being attentive to someone, taking stock of the people around you that are beginning to falter. And when somebody begins to lose their job or falls into debt, that's when you step up. It's less of a lift for you and the community at that time. And I would say it's the same experience in the middle of a pandemic, love flourishes. I'm marrying people as a mayor in New Jersey. It was on my driveway in New Jersey. Now it's in my backyard. I'm doing what I can to the chizak the boat, to give people a little bit of a chizuk and a little bit of an encouragement to go forward. And I would say it's the same notion. And it's a, it's a beautiful notion. You don't have to be Jewish, but it is imbued in the Torah that when you give, you give according to what the person needs and not what your perception is. And you give in a way that will allow them to restore themselves to a condition in life that they can help themselves rather than feel that they're the beneficiary of charity. Amazing, amazing words. Um, if you have to share um, to your children and grandchildren um, something that you um, you have feel godliness revealed in your life, um, there is any particular moment in your life or any episode of your life that you see, wow, this is really God that you remember? So it happened this morning when I woke up. I woke up. I was there. I breathed. I was able to taste an apple, to drink some milk. All of those things are meaningful experiences. I have to tell you, though, it, the one task that brings uh, the Abishta or God out to me is uh, my work with Hatzala. I'm a 27-year veteran of the ambulance service here in New York. And in the middle of a work day or at night, going on calls to help complete strangers, I see God's presence. I feel his presence. Wow. You can see the love of a mother trying to help a child, a husband or a wife, and the emergency and the circumstance that's there. You can feel the spirituality. When we do lose a patient sometimes, and the loss that is so mm -hmm. imminent, and you can feel the presence of God. The wow. idea is to try to take the mundane and make things more significant when you realize the simple blessings of putting on your clothing and eating and going along your day are things that we take for granted and that it's because of God that we have those blessings and abilities. Last question. If you have any message that oh, something about um, giving, being a giver um, to the young people, you know, we are living in a new generation Like I always said that the, there was a there was a lot of persecutions in the story of the Jewish people. Uh, we lost six million Jews in the Holocaust, and now today we're losing a lot of Jewish people. I think because they don't get married. There is a issue with commitment, um, and that's my job to help them to meet each other and to start new Jewish homes. Thanks God we have more than 100 couples who they met through K Space. But it's very tough and it's a very difficult generation. You are a good example of being married and God with an amazing wife and also have children that thanks God they choose uh, the right um, um, you know um, soulmate. God thanks God. If you have to advise young people who are single What will be the best, the best advice from you? It's a, it's an interesting experience, and I have the privilege also of teaching at a, a law school, Cardoza Law School, and I have to connect with my students now through Zoom. And for the last 10 years, I've had the privilege of actually connecting with them in a classroom. They have my cell phone, they text me, 
I develop strong ties and I mentor them. And I begin to see as I get older and people around me get younger, how important the love life balance is and what kind of support that gives every decision that you take. I tell young lawyers as they disembark from law school, it's more important who you'll marry than what kind of lawyer you'll be. Because with the right support at home, with the right influence, with the right spirituality, the neshama, as it were, you're going to be 10 feet tall, no matter how much money you make. But with the wrong decision or trying to do this on your own, it'll be so much harder as the physics, as I talked of, of the donkey, of lifting yourself in your station in life. And I've had the good schut to see that. I'm, I should say I'm a survivor of a 30-year marriage uh, myself with four beautiful children. And I love my wife today, every day, as if it was the first time I saw her and I met her. And I couldn't imagine anything more magnificent for my father to say at my mother's uh, funeral, Allah when he quoted from Bet Midler's song, The Wind Beneath My Wings. Oh. Nobody, my father wasn't even listening to music the way I thought he was listening. But he saw that my mom's influence permeated everything. Why deprive yourself of going through life without a partner and a partner who will take responsibility and add value where you may be faltering and then lift you with the right person by your side? Again, the notion of Staka where we're trying to help and the work that you do at K-Space is extraordinary. My brother's also in Kirov. You need so many people on deck because the Holocaust nearly succeeded in destroying our people. We are doing the rest of the job by not staying within uh, the faith and encouraging people to perpetuate the faith, the faith. I want you to know, last Shabbat, the Shabbat before that, I'm walking with my brothers and sisters in the African-American community, and I'm developing very strong relationships with pastors and leaders. They want a Shabbat. I've had pastors that have come to my home and they see my father bless me, and then I turn to my son and I bless him, and the pastor started to cry. I said, why are you crying? I invited him for a Shabbat meal. He says, I need a Shabbat. I don't know who my father was. Here, your father's blessing you. You're blessing your, your, your son. You do this every Friday, every Shabbat. It's a special moment, but we have to understand that those moments are moments that we make, that we take. And it doesn't happen organically. You have to go to K-Space. You have to give what you can give. You shouldn't give too much so it hurts you. You shouldn't give so little so that it doesn't affect you. But you have to also understand that once you're okay, you know, they say in an airplane, when the oxygen comes down, put it on yourself before somebody else. Once you're okay, take care of the person next to you. Make sure that the good rabbi has enough tzedah l'derech, that he has enough food for the way, that there's enough seats, that he has enough resource in these unorthodox times to, to communicate with people in a Zoom session. And you will take the notion of waking up and tasting an apple and looking at the beautiful noise. I considered it noise. As my house fills up now with every generation and all the effort that we put into it, it's all because my wife and I met 30 years ago and we created all this beautiful neshama, this soul in our home. And it's all because of wonderful people like you, Rabbi, that encourage people to do it. And uh, as an example to other nations, we have to make sure that whatever you choose to do, you choose to help people in your community, whether they're Jewish, whether they're not Jewish, and that you help your Jewish home build itself strong. So as we worry now about what's happening in the attic, we have a very strong foundation and you set that foundation in stone in your 20s, maybe in your 30s. After that, it's harder because you get stubborn. But now's the time you have to dig down deep. That's really where you come in. And I'm so honored to be your friend. And I would urge everybody to support you, all of your efforts. Um, and it's so important. Next time I'm in Miami, I hope to socially distant, uh, break bread with you. And, I will hug you. I don't know what you're going to do, but I will hug you. <laughs> we'll figure it out. We have an office in Aventura, and my son lives in uh, Miami, and his little baby. So that's the that's ground zero for all the uh, the, the you know the Mazel Tov and the and the goodness in our family right now. Amazing. But it all starts at home 
with a spouse. Don't underestimate. That's the most important decision that you'll make, not just for your uh, personal life, but your professional life, your spiritual life. Everything comes from the beautiful relationship that you develop. That's Amazing. Wow. Unbelievable. You touch my heart, though. And, um, and probably the heart of many, many people, many of the young people. Thank you so much, Michael. I, I, some bad news. You also get a mother-in-law. So <laughs> humor in it. Not so everything is like me. Huh? You have to like me. She's in a different state. She's in New York. <laughs> So well, that's where you can get some visa work to get somebody out. But uh, <laughs> uh, all, all kidding aside, um, join the club. And by the way, it goes. When things are good, it flies. Yeah. Ten yeah. minutes ago, I was married. Twenty minutes ago, I had children. Thirty minutes ago, I mean, it's it, it's an absurd Crazy. how things fly, fly. You have to but, enjoy every moment. And it's available for everybody at K-Space. That's where it all happens. Thank you so much. Yes, uh, thanks God we're doing a lot of the uh, connection through the Zoom. The Corona doesn't don't stop us. Um, but you can't do it on Shabbat. That's the problem. You can't yeah. Zoom on Shabbat. We will slowly open, Bezat Hashem. Good. We try to be very careful now, but slowly I think it's going to get better and we're going to be able to to get back to normal and God willing open case space completely. There's God a lot you. of people waiting. God bless you for all the work that you do. Um, I don't think your door is closed for a single day, despite the pandemic, despite all the challenges. No, absolutely no. And you have to work harder. And please, I urge you to support this good rabbi because he needs the help and he makes it look easy, but it's not easy. Yeah, it's a lot of work. Thanks, God. And we have a lot of work to do. Baruch Hashem. Until Mashiach. Once Mashiach comes, vacation. <laughs> <laughs> Michael, thank you very, very, very much. Thank you very much. Very soon we're almost reaching the goal. So we're so excited. Look forward this to it. The screen, you see, well, we reach 87%. Baruch Hashem. That's wonderful. Beautiful. Yeah. You're very yeah. lucky. Thank Just, you. Uh, let us know here in New York what we can do to help. And please, please, wherever you are, reach in a little deeper, a little longer, a little stronger. The rabbi has your best interest and our community's best interest at heart. And this is all money that we're reinvesting in our own uh, people. And yes. by reinvesting and doing that, we will see the benefits. And it's less lifting, as I said earlier, that we all have to do as a community when we just help the person next to us just a little bit. Absolutely. That's absolutely right. Thank you so much, Michael. I will send you later the link if you want to. Please. Thank you. Have and 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 spread the word. <laughs> you're going you're gonna to go beyond it. I'm sure you're going to be. Yes, there. yes. We already have um, actually a few young people who they call me together and they told me they want to give 15,000 more after we reach the 200 in order wow. to match the 15,000 because the man you see now is, is, is really a matching campaign. So it's a half. So it's 200 means 100,000 and 100,000 will be matched by four donors. Beautiful. But uh, some young people, young, they want to give uh, 15,000, so we'll be matched to 50,000 more. So it's 230. Listen, God willing. The one thing we do is we learn from our children, and you have to have them to learn from them. So please, K Space, that's where it is. Absolutely. We have almost 120 babies that they were born from K Space couples. Amazing. Amazing. There is probably much more, but we will never know. <laughs> <laughs> that's, 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 that's a turning Michael, point. thank you so much. The video that's will be on Facebook. It's gonna be there forever. Okay, okay? So you can that's share. Lucky it. Rabbi and for the whole Kila, the whole congregation, lots of luck and love. Amen, amen. Thank you so much for your amazing thank words. Thank you. Say my best to your wife. I will. Thank you and to you as well. All the best. Ciao. Bye bye.